Hi, my name is Emily Spector, and I'm going to be presenting diseases of the heart, boasting or arrogance. So boasting, or fakar, is described from purification of from purification of the heart, the book that we read, as bragging about what one has not done or exerted any effort towards. So that's my topic about boasting. And basically what that means is that you're saying, oh, look at me, look at me, I'm so great. And you didn't really have much to do with what you were actually bragging about. For example, like, oh, look at me, I'm so smart. I got an A on this test, but maybe it was just a really easy test and maybe you're not actually super, super smart. Okay, so purification of the heart also describes the force behind the culture of boasting as arrogance. And basically what that means is that if you saw in my title, it says one of the diseases of the heart is boasting. And in um, parentheses, arrogance. And the reason why I put that there is because as purification of the heart um, shows, um, arrogance is a big part of boasting. The reason um, the whole point of boasting is this arrogance. And so, um, one can consider boasting also arrogance as well. Um, so anyways, but this boasting, which comes from arrogance, um, purification of the heart talks about um, three types of arrogance, that there are three types of arrogance one can have. Um, the first one is thinking you are above everybody else. Um, the second one is displaying disdain or contempt for other people. And the third one is thinking that you have superior genes or ancestry, like, oh, I'm white. Um, I'm... I'm so much better than every other culture or genes. Uh, so for the first type of arrogance, the Quran actually states, um, actually represents it, that there are three, there are these three different types of arrogance. And um, this first verse from the Quran actually shows this first type of arrogance, um, that you thinking you are above someone else. And it says, and every time I have called to them that thou mightiest forgive them, they have only thrust their fingers into their ears, covered themselves up with their garments, grown up obstinate, and given themselves up to arrogance. And basically what that means is it's showing that first type of arrogance. Like, oh, I'm so much... Like, I can't even hear what anyone else is saying. Like, I'm not even going to be paying attention to anything else but myself because I am above everyone else. I'm not even going to listen to what anyone else says because I'm so wrapped up in myself and how great I am. And then um, the second type of arrogance, um, like being mean to others, is shown through the Quran with the second quote. Oh, Shrab, we shall certainly drive these out of our city, thee and those who believe with thee, or else ye, thou and they, shall have to return to our ways and religion. And as you can see, like, we'll drive these people out because they don't, they don't match us. And that's kind of an arrogance, like, you know, being like, oh, you're not as great as I am. It's like, be mean, like, I'm going to drive you out of this city. Um, because you're not as great as I am. So that's that second part of arrogance shown through the Quran. And then the third type of arrogance, which is feeling like your genes or culture, um, is superior to, um, superior to everyone else, is shown through the Quran through this one verse. The people of aid unjustly sought dominance on the earth, saying, who is more powerful than us? Did they not consider that God created them and that he is more powerful than they were? So as you can see, 
um, the people of eight are like, oh, we're so great. We're the most powerful people ever. And it's based on the fact that they, we are the people of eight. And so that, that is showing that, that they think that culture is superior. And as you can see from that, the end of the line, like, did they not, like, think that God created them? So it's showing, like, hey, like, they're being arrogant, you know? Like, um, God, uh, God, Allah created them. So they're being arrogant. They didn't even, they're so caught up with themselves that they didn't even consider that God was creating them. They're, they're just so great. Um, okay. So those are the three types of um arrogance and so anyways so you can tell um that's kind of what arrogance is but now I'm gonna kind of do dove into okay so you're arrogant what happens now are there consequences and that's kind of what I was talking about in my paper um that there are there are a lot of consequences to um, being arrogant. Thus, it's a disease of the heart, boasting or arrogance. Um, it's so obviously your heart is diseased. It's not pure. There's going to be consequences. Um, and there's a lot of consequences. The Quran states that like, since you are arrogant, there are going to be a lot of different punishments from Allah, from God. And um, I'll state a couple of those. This first punishment is um, verse, the quote is, I will divert my sign, is a law saying, I will divert my signs from those who show arrogance without right. So that's, that's a pretty powerful, you know, Allah isn't going to take his time um, to show you the right way or to pay attention to you because you're not being arrogant. So, you know, um, you're not going to be shown the right way. You're not going to be have this path to pureness. You're um, from Allah himself. And I feel like that's a pretty powerful consequence. Um, Quran also states that Allah said that he uh, sets a seal upon the heart of every, every arrogant tyrant. So, I mean, he's, he's marking them. Allah is marking them. And that's and that's not, he's marking that they have a diseased heart. So that's, that's another consequence is they're being marked by Allah, but not in a good way, in a very bad way. And then, um, another, um, quote from the Quran is talking about arrogance. The messenger of Allah repeated it three times. Abdu Dura remarked, they are ruined. Who are they, O messenger of Allah? Upon this, the messenger of Allah said, one who lets down his lower garments below his ankles out of arrogance, one who boasts of his favors done to another and who sells his good by taking a false oath. So as you can see, that's also stating like, if you're so arrogant, you're ruined. There's, there's not much hope. You're going to have a bad life. Um, and then this, this, um, this next, this last one is, I feel like the most powerful. Um, and it was talking about, um, that last quote was actually, um, Bob, for a second, go back. Um, that last quote was actually talking about the day of resurrection. So they're not going to have a good afterlife, the hereafter, as it's referred to. It's not going to be done. Their, um, their day of resurrection, they're not, their soul isn't going to go up to heaven. It's going to be ruined. You know, they're going to live in punishment for the rest of their lives while those who are um, not arrogant and live by the words of Allah and his teachings are going to go up to heaven and have a very good afterlife. But, you know, so they're just going to live in punishment and being ruined for, um, for eternity, um, which is not very good. And then, so going back, now this last one, um, this last consequences, I, I think it's also powerful. Um, I, I think the 
previous one, the one about the day of resurrection, I think is a really powerful one, especially for like a lot of Muslims. It's like, because the hereafter, the afterlife is so important. That's what we're working towards. And it's like, well, no, if you're arrogant, you're not going to have a good one. So, um, but this last one is um, actually in the Hadath. And it says, if anyone wants to have his deeds widely publicized, so if anyone wants, is going to be like arrogant or like, I want to brag. Um, Allah will publicize his humiliation, and if anyone makes a hypocritical display of his deeds, Allah will make a display of him. So, yeah, that's pretty powerful. It's saying if everyone, if someone wants to brag, come, come here. I will display you. I will display your deeds and your failures, and you will be humiliated. You know, and if. I'm sure we've all been humiliated. It's a horrible feeling. So um, that's pretty, pretty powerful, you know, like an Allah is going to be the one humiliating you, having all of your deeds on display, having your soul on display and kind of showing what a bad person you are. Okay. So now that um, we've had this discussion of what boasting or arrogance um, is and the consequences of it, it's, let's move on to what, um, what's going on in the world with arrogance and boasting in psychology and the literature today. Um, so first I kind of started with, um, first I started, um, just like looking up stuff and, um, I got, uh, Islamic psychologist first because this is Islamic psychology so I thought it would be interesting to hear from a psychologist from Islam who has um, passed in Islamic psychology. So um, my paper talks about um, Monique Hassan and she actually has a um, she has a B bachelor's of science um, in psychology, but so she's done a lot of research and stuff. And um, her ideas, um, she works for Cypral, Psych Central, actually, which is um, this psychology center. It's actually ranked very highly, which is cool. So, but Hassan, Monique Hassan's idea, and it talks about arrogance in light of the Islamic religion. And... Her idea is that people are not born with arrogance, which kind of match, matches up to what we've learned in class, that, um, you know, people are born with this um, pure soul, right? But, um, so, and everybody's born with a pure soul, Muslims, non-Muslims, and um, there's these temptations in the world that... Um, start making your heart unpure. So that's why there's all these teachings so that you can have a pure heart to teach you how to stay pure. And so that kind of matches up that arrogance. You aren't born with arrogance. You would learn it. Um, and then she kind of goes deeper into why people feel arrogant. And she says it's more of a defense mechanism. People are arrogant not because they're like, oh, I'm so great, but more because they're insecure. They don't feel good about themselves, which, you know, makes sense. They're overcompensating. They're so insecure. They don't like the way they see themselves that um, <laughs> they, they need to brag about themselves for them to feel good. And she actually... Um, named it in a modern um, Western psychological disorder called narcissistic personality disorder. And um, for um, people who don't know what that is, it's a personality disorder. So it means like you're a personality, you know, maybe you're confident, but you take that kind of to the extreme, like an overinflated sense of self-worth and importance. Um, as said by Hassan. So then I um, actually looked at this journal article and I was kind of tying in arrogance to um, other current psychological themes and literature today. And um, 
Actually, this journal article, Death of a Narcissistic Salesman, an Integrative Model of Fragile Self-Esteem, actually linked up low self-esteem to arrogance. And it kind of talks about how arrogance is a system of low self-esteem. So that's people who are really unhappy. It kind of go, ties back into what Hassan is talking about. You know, they have really low self-esteem. Um, they tend to act arrogantly to compensate, to cope for that. Um, you know, and it also kind of talks about how, um, and it kind of supports this Islamic um, idea in the Islamic religion that, you know, um, arrogance is a disease of the heart, but, um, in, but in this article, it kind of talks about it in a Western way, how arrogance, um, is a symptom of low self-esteem, which is detrimental to someone's mental health. If you have low self-esteem, you are not going to be happy. And then I went to another journal article and it kind of talked about, it's called The Dark Triad and Normal Personality Traits. And it talks about how um, arrogance is also related to other um, bad personality traits or personality disorders. Specifically, it talked about psychopathic tendencies. So, And the whole idea kind of was that having like one bad trait can lead or one bad personality disorder can um, lead or like affect other parts of your personality and can lead to um, other um, bad traits. So if you start becoming arrogant um, and it, you can become really narcissistic, um, you can also be you're more likely to become psychopathic, which is kind of interesting. And it, like, from an, if you translate it more to these diseases of the heart, it kind of looks at it from like, oh, you know, you have one disease of the heart, that, such as arrogance. And if you've, we've read this purification of the heart and we've read many diseases, they are really closely related, a lot of them. So it kind of stands to reason that from that, like, it's kind of this Western psychology view is saying the exact same thing. It's supporting this, like, hey, you know, if you have one disease of the heart or if you have one, like, mental illness, you are really likely to have another disease of the heart or another mental illness. Um, and it also talks about this article, um, The Dark Triad and No More Personality Traits, kind of talks about actually who um, is more likely to have this these bad personality traits or these um diseases of the heart um and it kind of talks about how lower class people are more likely to have these personality traits or in the islamic perspective um diseases of the heart and i may and i think that makes sense because um people who are more educated um will either in Islam or, like, just in general in a Western view, like, they're more likely to have a happier mental health. They're more likely to be trained, to be educated, to be taught how to have a pure heart or to have a, have a good mental health. And, you know, people of lower class, I'm sure, um, aren't taught that. They don't, um, they're low poverty, they're parent, there's a lot of neglect. So I thought that was kind of really, um, interesting about like who is going is more likely to have these um diseases of the heart or these mental disorders um so anyways then the next part the last part of my paper talks about okay so we've talked about what boasting or arrogance is we've talked about its consequences we've talked about um how how it's seen and what other um psychological um psychological disorders or themes are related to arrogance and boasting. Um, but now, how do we treat it? How do you treat it? And I feel like um, there's so many ways, there's so many things that you can um, do to cure a disease of the heart or just um, cure your mental health. And so my ideas was more, um, I had three steps that you could 
either do all together or combine two of them, just work on one of them, that I thought were really important for um, curing this disease of the heart. And one is more for um, a Muslim audience. And it's, um, it's from, my idea for this comes from the Quran. The Quran says, reflect from what he was created. He was created from an ejected fluid that issues from between the loins and the ribs. So my idea is when you have Muslims patients come in and they want more of a Muslim um, perspective treatment, that, you know, you have them sit there and you have them reflect like, you know, they're thinking, oh, I'm so great. Oh, I'm so great. Um, you have them reflect and be like, well, where do I come from? You know, I come from um, just this fluid, you know, so I'm, I'm so small in comparison to everything else that's going on in the world. You know, so to remind them themselves that there is so much more going on in the world, they are a small piece of that, you know, and they should really be thinking, you know, who they come from, Allah. And then my next step um, is about um, a treatment based around thinking about others. So it kind of starts out um, having the patient, um, and this is from, from more of a Western I guess, psychological perspective, have them sit down with the patient and have the patient um, list people who are important to them, people who, um, who relationships matter, people who they want to, like, continue to have a relationship with, and then have the patient be shown, like, role plays, videos, and articles, and research about how others react to someone who displays arrogance, which is going to be negatively. And then, um, you know, show like what happens to relationships through like videos, role play articles about people who are arrogant and how people don't want to have relationships with them. And maybe like have someone role play with them and like, you know, they'd be like, hey, let's go out to this. And the person's kind of like on the phone with maybe their friend. I don't want to go out with this person. They're always being arrogant. Um, and stuff like that. And so the treatment process is like about motivating someone to stop being arrogant so that they can, or boasting, so that they can have healthy relationships with other people. So it kind of um, goes to that um, motivation of other people. Like, well, do you want to have good, healthy relationships in life? Um, and so this last step is um, about, um, I'm taking clinical psychology, so it's about um, cognitive therapy. Um, it's about uh, coping skills. So, and um, just cognitive means like in your brain. So um, it would have it would involve the patient writing down when they're being arrogant, like when they say something arrogant or just even when they are thinking something arrogant. And so that person, the patient, can see, oh my God, I am being arrogant inwardly and outwardly all these times. Like I'm doing it a lot. Like this is obviously a problem. So, um, and then, um, and then from there, so they recognize it after they recognize, oh my gosh, I'm being so arrogant, I'm boasting so much. Then have them go to the um, next step of this process, which is having them try to replace, you know, maybe get some goals. Okay, well, what are your thoughts? You know, what thoughts keep coming up? Like, oh my God, I'm so beautiful today. Or, oh my God, I'm so smart, you know, and having them be like, okay, well, what thoughts could we replace with those? So every time, keeping track of maybe like every time they ha they start thinking, oh my God, I'm so beautiful, have them replace it with another um, thought. Oh, I think I look good today, but there are a lot of other people who look really pretty as well. Um, you know, just with like more humble thoughts, um, whether it be like, you know, n I'm not so great, or hey, there's a lot of other people who um, have, who are also really great to kind of be like, I'm not the greatest. I'm just part of a lot of other people who are also great. 
And so those are my three um, kind of different steps or treatments that I think would work. And I think a lot of them can be um, paired together with one another um, to help to help someone cure this disease of the heart. So anyways, that was what my paper was about. Um, and, you know, just to have people realize, you know, like no one wants to be around an arrogant person. It's not very fun. We've all, we've all had that person where we just walk away and we're like, I'm never going to talk to you again. Like, you're being arrogant. So I hope you've learned something from this lecture and from my paper. So thank you so much. Goodbye.